The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Praise the Lord and welcome back to studying the word. Lord God, we give you praise. We give you thanks again for this opportunity to share your word. We ask that you lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're still teaching on effective leadership. In part four, we talked about the we talked about following the leader. And we know that our leader is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So hopefully you took the time to think on those things that I left with you as well as share them with your ministry team. Now this week, let's talk about who has clout or power. When we say clout, we're talking power. Who has the power? Now keep in mind that every servant leader is accountable to a higher authority and exists to serve God and others. Keep that in mind. So let's take a look at some definitions while we're here. Now the word power, the word power means the ability to influence people to do something or to change in some way whether they want to or not. And so, as having power, it should be to influence people in a positive way to do things or to change in some way, whether they want to or not. Now, authority, which differ from power, means the right to exercise power. Authority is the right to exercise power. And then, of course, there's responsibility. Responsibility is being accountable for the use of power. So you have power, you have authority, and you have responsibility. So as a church leader, you have power to lead and the authority to use that power. Now, you have some things to keep in mind. Power comes with the job and the position. Also, power is appealing. It is very appealing. For some reason, people appeal to power. Power appeals to them, and they themselves wants to be powerful. Also, power has a seductive pull on those in leadership. And many times, they don't even realize uh, that they are being pulled by power because it's so seductive and then when we do realize it sometimes it's too late so jesus radical teaching about power is found in saint mark chapter 10 verses 42 through 45 and we need to go there uh to read this because this is about jesus radical teaching about power and what we find here, a very familiar passage. Uh, when the Thunder Brothers, uh, James and John, were seeking positions uh, at Jesus' right and left hand, it caused a disturbance among the other disciples. And so we pick up at uh, verse 42 where it says, But Jesus called them to him and said unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles, exercise lordship over them because they have been given the position of power over them. And their great ones exercise authority upon them. In other words, someone is always over someone else. Verse 43 says, but so shall it not be among you. It will not be this way among you. Why? But whosoever will be great among you, Jesus teaches, shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. Verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be minister unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. My God, my God. 
Now this is Jesus radical teaching about power. So if you want to be the head honcho, then you have been called to serve. It's just that simple. Serving leadership is not patterned after the model powers of secular leadership. Let me say that again. Serving leadership is not patterned after the power models of secular leadership. So let's talk about the two uh, quickly. Starting with power leaders from a secular perspective. Power leaders, they exist to control. They live to control. They enjoy the spotlight and being the lead dog. And we've already seen whether you're going to be the lead dog in Jesus' uh, kingdom of society uh, in his ball game, then you're going to be a servant. Not only that, but the power, the power, the power leaders, they, they gain control. And when they gain control, they hoard it. They don't share it. And they use it for their benefit. It's all about them. Not only that, they keep the focus on themselves and their agenda. They don't really care about anyone else's agenda. Just theirs. And also, they are consumed, my friend, with self-interest. Self-interest. Consumed with themselves and what it is that they want to do. And so with that, they are willing to manipulate, intimidate, eliminate or abuse those who differ from their point of views. Oh yes, they begin to eliminate or abuse people. They begin to slander, deceive and coerce. Whatever it takes, again, they like to manipulate and intimidate they make all the decisions, all the decisions, whether it's right or wrong, good or bad. They make all the decisions. They demand obedience, and they command loyalty. Demand it. They haven't earned it, but they're demanding it. And then they love to dictate. And they love to bark out orders, just, just bark out all kinds of orders, get people jumping. And then they pull rank to get their way. They will pull rank to get their way. And not only that, but their greatness, their greatness is determined by always moving up. Always moving up. Now, I ask you, have you met or worked with or for someone like that? I'm sure you have. If you've been in the workplace more than a year or two, you certainly have have. And we even see these uh, kinds of uh, uh, role models in the military as well. People are just power hungry for some reason. But Jesus said what? Not so among you. Not so among you according to St. Mark chapter 10 verses 43 and 44. He said not so among you. Servant leaders use their power to serve and not rule. To serve and not rule. Serving leaders' ambition is not self-centered. It is not self-centered. But my friend, it is self-sacrificial. Let's talk about the servant leaders. Is that all right? Servant leaders. First of all, we exist to serve. We exist to serve. Not only that, but we share the spotlight, and being a servant is first and foremost. So we don't mind sharing the spotlight. We use our power to serve others and not to lord over them, but to serve others. We make Christ. Christ is the center focus and agenda in our lives. He is the central focus and agenda in our lives. Not only that, we are serving leaders. We are consumed with the interests of others. And so therefore, my friend, there are some things that we're willing to do. We're willing to help. We're willing to care. We're willing to teach. Mm -hmm. 
teach, yes, we're willing to love, we're willing to allow others to make decisions so that they may grow and learn. Uh, we're willing to initiate obedience and inspire loyalty. That's what we're willing to do because we ourselves have been obedient. And so because we were obedient followers, then we can set the example as well. Uh, not only that, but we'll, uh, uh, we love to serve. We, we, we love to serve. We realize that we're servants, so we love to serve. Now, if you see a servant leader who doesn't love to serve and doesn't love to do these things I'm pointing out, you know, you, you may want to talk to them, but uh, keep your eyes on them. Uh, not only that, we never seek to get our way because of our position. We surely don't. And not only that, but our greatness, our greatness is determined by always moving down. This is how our greatness is determined. Always moving down, condescending, amen, dealing with those who are of low estate. My God. So, power should serve and not rule. Power should serve and not rule. Now, we serve people with our power. And if we do so, they will not rebel against our power. That's something to keep in mind. Serving with our power. And they will not rebel against our power. You should use your power, uh, if you use your power for yourself, and sooner or later you will lose the respect of your people and you will probably lose your position. So be careful, keep that in mind. Serving leadership served rather than being served. For even the Son of Man, According to St. Mark chapter 10, verse 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be minister unto, but to minister, and not only that, my friend, but to go as far as to give his life a ransom for many, whosoever will. <laughs> my God, my God, what a leader to follow. Not only that, but a servant leader is submissive to the Lord Jesus. Submissive to the Lord Jesus. We find in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 15, and it says this, And that he died for all. Yes, he did. He died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Not anymore. But unto him which died for them and rose again. So that's why I say, my friend, we as servant leader, we are submissive to the Lord Jesus Christ. A servant leader, our interest, again, is submissive to the interest of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5 says, For we preach not ourselves, Paul said, for we preach not ourselves, but we preach Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. My God, my God. Not for ourselves, hmm, but as your servants for Jesus' sake. In other words, Christ is interested in God's glory. We find this in St. John 17, 4. You can read it later. Uh, Christ is interested in proper worship. Proper worship. You find that in uh, uh, St. Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 16. Uh, also, Christ is interested in discipling people. Discipling people. Christ is interested in restoring people. Praise God. Keep in mind. As Paul said, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. And so Christ is interested in uh, discipline, rebellious saints to maintain the purity of the church. That's his interest. Christ is interested in 
uh, correcting competitive leadership. Correcting competitive leadership. He had to correct James and John and their desire to have a high seat. My God in heaven. Uh, Christ is also interested in stable marriages. He's interested in having servant leadership. That's what it's boiled down to. Because if he came to serve, then he would have us to serve also. Can I get a witness? So, take the time. Take the time to see if there is any misuse of power in your personal life where you may or may not be misusing power in your personal life. And let me ask you some questions. Have you ever manipulated your spouse or mistreated a co-worker competing for a promotion? Have you tooted your own horn to get what you wanted? And some folks, some folks are good at tooting their horn. They want you to know they did this, they did that. Uh, my God, and they're experts in this and that and the other, just constituting their horn. But don't you know that our gift will make room for us? <laughs> also, let me ask you this. Have you ever responded impatiently to someone underneath you who asked you for a favor? Power struck. Have you ever responded to your kids with a thoughtless, because I said so? <clears throat> or even your employee, uh, someone else? Have you ever been guilty of playing office politics? You know, engaging in turf wars, demanding uh, marital rights. My God. And you know, you know, praise the Lord in the workplace. And even in the church, even in the church, people playing politics, always stirring up stuff. Also, are there not times when you would rather rule than serve? In other words, I'm tired of serving. I want to rule. I want to be the boss. I want to be the head cheese. My God. Uh, time that you would rather get then give or you will power rather than submit to authority or you rather be honored rather than honoring others my god uh, if, if you say yes to these things you may have been misusing your powers or have a desire to misuse power so choose one of the things uh, that I just mentioned and describe the situation, the old thing that I've just mentioned, and you can do a rewind, so, but, but, but be honest, be honest. What could you have done differently to demonstrate servant leadership? Again, rewind and view again the description of a power leader. Do you see yourself in any of these circumstances? Think through the ministry organizations and our churches uh, of which you have been a part. And take the time to list the situation in which you observe power leadership in action. And now that I've already talked about them, it should be easier uh, to recall or identify. Uh, power leadership in action. And then again, what was the outcome of that power leadership in each situation? And how did it affect the other leaders or the people around them? Because I'm telling you, my friend, you know as well as I know that there are some power stroke, power hungry, power seeking people, not only in the workplace, but also in the house of God. And it should not be. Someone is always looking to take over. So, get with your group. Get with your ministry team. Those whom you 
work with and, and, and think about your church and its ministry and determine if there is anything in the ministry or the leadership that might promote power leadership, things such as reserve parking for leaders. Uh, I've seen a lot of things go wrong <laughs> with reserve parking at the church or the workplace. Also, leaders wanting to be referred to by a title or degree. In other words, you can't call them uh, brother more, or sister more, or what have you. You've got to address them by their title or degree. It doesn't matter that we're all sisters and brothers in the Lord. And I'm, I'm telling you, that that bugs me to no end. I mean, you can call me Will, Bill, James, I answer to all of those. Brother Moore, Willie Moore, uh, I would answer to that and have no problem. Because I know who I am. I know who, uh, uh, I know what I've been called to do and to be. So by you not using my title, that doesn't change who I am. My works will speak for me. My deportment, my behavior, my conduct will speak for me. So I'm not hung up on titles. And then those who are, well, they're not fulfilling the title anyways. My God. Look, <laughs> another thing, uh, leaders thinking that they are leaders for life. They can't be demoted. They can't be undone or what have you. And then the lack of communication with the congregation, lack of communication. Well, we don't need to tell them nothing. We don't need to talk with them. We just go ahead on and do this and do it because I said so. My God, my God. Uh, how about leaders who always have the last word? Leaders have to have the last word. I don't care how much you uh, offer or rebut. They still got to have the last word. They always have to be justified. They have to rationalize. But they got to have the last word for whatever reason. Not only that, but they enjoy telling others what to do. I mean, just got to. Just, just, it just pleasures them to tell others <laughs> what to do. And not only that, they won't share authority or responsibility. They, they, they just won't do it. They want to keep it to themselves. And then, my friend, they demonstrate a volcanic temperament to get their way. In other words, they just throw a fit, get all loud and ugly to intimidate them, to manipulate them. Well, get loud if you want to. You're just loud. Ain't no sense of throwing no temper tantrum. But leaders throw temper tantrum for whatever reason. They get their way by saying, we have always done it this way. We have always. What they're actually saying is, don't expect it to change. Because it won't be changing anytime soon. And not only that, but they are not accessible. They are not accessible. I mean, I can, I can, the secular workplace, you know, some have a lot of red tape that you have to go through just to get to where you want to be. In fact, I don't even like calling some businesses because when you pick up the phone, you got about 15 choices of menus that you have to go through to reach whoever you want. Hmm? But in the church, in God's house, whereas we supposed to be servants, we are not accessible. We have set up all different types of roadblocks, hmm? bureaucracies, steps just to reach who we want to reach. We are just not accessible. We say we are, but we're not really at all because I think the bottom line is we don't want to be bothered. 
Also, we have little or no accountability. Little or no accountability. We don't want to be accountable to no one. No one. All of my life, I've always wanted to be accountable to someone. Why? So I won't embarrass them. Now, I live the life that God has called me to live. Hold me accountable. I want to be held accountable. There's nothing wrong with that, my friend. Jesus already have taught us this. And then you got those who won't return a phone call. No, they're not going to return a phone call. So I'm telling you right now, if you call, leave them a message so you'll know that you called and you left a message because some folks will say, well, I've been trying to call you. When they said that to me, I said, really? I said, well, you didn't leave no message. You must not have been trying to call me because if you had, you'd have left a message. And I believe in returning phone call. But some won't do this. They just will not do it. And then, of course, they make all the decisions. All the decisions. Who would want that burden? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Look, take the time to discuss what you have seen. Again, discuss it with your team or what have you. And then ask yourself, does anything need to change? Does anything need to change? If so, what needs to change? And then what has to happen for the change to occur? What has to happen for the change to occur? So if you are a team leader, you are a team member, you should be concerned about these things. Be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Be that servant leader that Christ has called us to be. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to sit down and study your word, to share your word, Lord God. Hopefully, Lord God, that we will listen and we will take heed so that we will grow up in you in all things, oh Lord God. We want our lives to glorify you in everything that we both say and do. And I pray that you continue to give me uh, the zeal, the desire, the fervency, Lord God, the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding uh, to teach your word, oh Lord God, that we may have the leaders Lord God, that you would have us to be and to lead your people in the way that they should be led. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, again, as always, thanks for being with me today to study the word of God. And I pray that this teaching is helping you to be a better leader. I really do. So please join me next week as we continue with this leadership teaching. I pray, I'm hopeful that it is helping you. So until then, put into action what you have learned already. And remember, leadership is never a luxury. It's always a necessity. Until next week. God bless you, my friend.